I'm a field operator. That's what I'm about. I'm about getting product to the table. And I'm about helping farmers get product to the table. I just absolutely immerse myself in the science so that I can understand what product do I get to the table and how do I get it to the table and how do I get around problems that are coming from other industries that we're involved in. And so when Abrams and I got to get together, he came at me academically, but it wasn't aggressive in a negative way. It was like, I wanna disprove or prove your theory. And once he saw that there was a validity to it, which was awesome for me because it let me know I was on the right track, because not every time does your theory work out. You know, we all have theories that aren't quite accurate. And then someone tells you and you're like, okay, I'll adjust. And that, that's called controlling your ego. So you subjugate your ego, you get better information, you run down the road with the new material, and you do better. And he was able to say, hey, this is accurate. Can I use your material to go play my own game with it? And I said, yeah, I'd love to because you guys can do stuff I can't do with diagnostic scatter plotting. You, you have the ability to use scientific tools to measure things in ways I don't have the ability. And you guys are statistical geniuses, so you'll be able to see relationships in ways I can't. And now we can start to see how varieties really lay across a spectrum. So now we can start to give people choices that are accurate, dispensaries and opportunity or storefronts, whatever we want to call the modern cannabis store. The ability to, to relate to the patient, the customer that's coming in and say, look, what are you seeking? And if you'd like a range of products that reflect reality, I can give you a range here in ways that you like. So if you like flavor spectrums, I can give you stuff in similar flavonoid profiles, but on a gradient that'll say similar experience through the mouth, but radical different experience through how you're in your head. And that way what we do is we start to be able to really work with a knowledge base on customers, which then as producers, it allows us to be able to produce at a smarter level versus strain du jour. Because you don't, this, this is constant, new thing, new thing, new thing. I'm like, you renamed it seven times. It's still Mendo Perp. Yeah, but no, it's still Mendo Perp. I don't give a shit what you do. DNA it. All right, it's a perp. And so why would you want to have 17 different perps? And it's the same with a lot of the OGs is you find the best OGs and that's what you work with. And you get rid of a lot of these redundant, lower quality ones that people are playing with because ultimately the buyer comes in and they look at it and they go, there's 42 different ones, how do I know? And so when I went into a dispensary in Seattle, my partner owns uh, Dockside. So Dockside's the largest Seattle, the distributor, dispensary in Seattle. So I go in there, they got like 700 varieties, literally. There's 700 varieties. The board that's on the wall, it looks like you're at a racetrack with so many different horses running and you're just like, holy shit. And it's overwhelming and I'm like, how would any customer ever get to understand what they were looking at? And so, you know, I make it easy. Give me something gassy, give me something floral. And I ask the bud denda, what are you into? And they go, oh, easy. This is what's gassy that's hot. This is what's floral that's hot. And I've been really enjoying this one recently. So in a single sentence, I just knocked out 697 yeah, farms. And what happens to all of those other... Like Slow velocity and they sit and they get something called dust <laughs> in the shelf. Yeah. But ultimately, the people believe there needs to be variety. In order for you to compete with these other dispensaries, you have to have the varieties. Otherwise, they say truncated. So like for me at my new spot, I did the opposite. I shrunk it down because I know that the majority of my market is going to be tourists coming through. I'm going to have locals coming through so we can cover some very high quality products that the locals want. But I want to make sure that there's a gradient in, in what's available and in pricing. So I'm not just trying to target and peel you because I, I don't agree with that. It, I came from a different background, so I got a, got a successful family, but I, I came out of the hood. And so all the years you're in it, you start to realize that not everybody has a lot of money. Yeah. So therefore, me beating you to death on price all the time isn't the way to go. That's a specific group. So a specific group pays premium prices. Other people pay less prices. The difference is in nuance, not in overall quality. Quality's quality, the nuances, the rarity, the very distinctions are what allow the separation. And so I want these gradients at my new store, but I want a truncated uh, selection so that when you come in, it only takes you 10 minutes. You walk in, what do you got? We got all this stuff right here. This is what we have. This is what does this. And then go, great, I can buy it, leave, and they can go and do their thing. Otherwise, you're in there for two hours and you're shopping and you're exploring and you're wondering and 
It doesn't work. And you've wasted your bud tender's time. Yep. You've wasted real estate in the store it's, for it's, other people yeah, coming in. Exactly. And leaves with only spending 30 bucks still, but taking up so much. Two hours of time. Money. And so I don't agree with it. And I also don't agree with the fact that you take on 700 farms and you're only moving the product from 40. And it's not that, and, and, and Dockside's a fantastic dispensary in all aspects, and it's managed well, and it's got quality people. So to me, it's an example of everything that's done right in normal cannabis, but having to respond to the lack of market knowledge. And once we get market knowledge where the market starts to become educated, and if you allow anybody to educate them other than the cultivators, oh, we're screwed. Because everybody who's trying to educate them is trying to educate them on fancy boxes and killer packaging and a nifty new thing.